Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. Now after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, and he said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because there are no more. When Herod died... An angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee, there he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Bow with me in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, and let all God's people say, Amen. So Christmas is a time to make journeys, right? My own daughter, Emily, is journeying today by plane uh, all the way from Kansas City, arriving this very evening. I am so excited that she will be home for Christmas. Uh, tomorrow evening, I think at the 7 o'clock service, I'm going to tell you a story uh, about how years ago, every Christmas morning, Carolyn and I would get up bright and early and we would either fly to central Kansas or we would drive to northern Illinois to spend time with family. We don't do that anymore. Uh, one Christmas while I was in college, I journeyed to Athens, Greece at Christmas time. I was supposed to meet up there with a friend and their travel plans fell through and so I wound up in a foreign country on Christmas Day all by myself. I, I found an English-speaking church, and at that church I met a woman from, of all places, Kansas. She grew up 30 miles from where I'm from, and she invited me to spend all of Christmas Day with her and her family. You know, some of us get to journey home for Christmas, and of course some of us don't. Some of us will journey instead, for example, to a spouse's home. Some of us have to get up early and journey to work, huh? even on Christmas Day. It's how it is. The Bible's Christmas stories are also filled with journeys, and most of them are not journeys home in any traditional sense. Some of them are just the opposite. There are the obvious ones, of course. Because of a Roman tax census, Mary and Joseph had to leave their home and journey to Bethlehem, where it came time for her to give birth. After Jesus was born, the shepherds got word, and they left their flocks in the field, and they also journeyed to Bethlehem to see this thing which had come to pass. The wise men, I suppose, journeyed the farthest of all. They came from far away in the east and they followed the star journeying until it stopped right over the place where Jesus was. But there are other journeys in this Christmas story. John's Gospel in chapter 1 says that in Jesus, God himself journeyed to earth to be with us. It says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And in today's gospel reading, Matthew refers to a journey taken by Rachel, literally the mother of Israel. Genesis says that just like Mary, Rachel 
journeyed while she was pregnant to Ephron, which is just outside of Bethlehem. And while she was there, she died, giving birth to her son, Benjamin. And so Matthew refers to Rachel weeping for her children. And then there is the journey that Mary and Joseph took after Jesus was born. You remember that King Herod wanted to find Jesus to get rid of this other king, and he was trying to get the wise men to help him out, but they tricked him. They went home by another way. And so Herod was so mad that he decided to kill every male child in Bethlehem, two years old and younger. And so Mary and Joseph had to run for their lives. They fled to Egypt, where they lived for a period of time as what today we would probably call undocumented immigrants. They were illegal aliens in the land of Egypt. And finally, after Herod died, they they journeyed back to the Holy Land, but they were still too afraid to stay in Judea. And so they found a new place, They traveled to Nazareth in Galilee, which is why Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but grew up in Nazareth. You know, not all journeys wind up at home, or at least not what we used to think of as home. And all of these journeys by Mary and Joseph and Jesus as refugees has got me thinking about all of those desperate families gathered on our own southern border. Refugees from violence in their own home countries in Central America. And you know, I'm, I'm quite aware that we don't all agree about what to do about that, about whether we keep a place home by keeping people out, or whether we make a place home by welcoming people in. And it's complicated, isn't it? I think of my own home, the parsonage that you provide for us. I love to invite people in. And Carolyn and I have already invited the, the church staff over to our home. And we hosted the leadership board's Christmas party in our home. Every other week, the young adults of the church come and meet in our home. But, of course, I can't have everybody in my home. And not all the time. It's complicated isn't it? But don't you think, don't you think that the fact that Mary and Joseph and Jesus were refugees inclines us towards compassion? Don't you think it makes us lean in the direction of hospitality? Don't you think? As we think about these hard journeys, that Mary and Joseph and Jesus took, it reminds us that even Christmas comes at a cost, doesn't it? We're, we're, we know, we're, we're accustomed to remembering that the glory of Easter involves the sadness of Good Friday, the suffering of the cross. But Christmas has got so wrapped up in sentimentality that it's hard for us to acknowledge, maybe we don't even know, that the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem involves the death of all those other children. Now, I'm not going to overemphasize this darker side of the Christmas story. I read one time uh, a, a piece by, by the editor of the Christian Century, Peter Marty, and he says early in his ministry, he made the mistake of preaching on Christmas Eve about Herod killing the babies. He compared that tragedy to the death of some children recently in his own community. And he says, after the service, one mother of young children marched up to him and said, mentioning the death of children on Christmas Eve is over the line. She said, I will never come back to this church. And she didn't. So, I'm not trying to ruin your Christmas spirit. Honestly, I'm not. I, I'm not going to dwell on what King Herod did. I promise I'm not going to mention it tomorrow night at all, okay? But we all know, don't we? We all know that even Christmas involves loss. Some of us know that dearly. And it doesn't have to be tragedy, right? Right? Uh, For myself, it can be as simple as this. For myself, Christmas will never, ever be the same as when I was a little boy. (laughs) 
and there were dozens of cousins crammed into grandma's house to play with and there were uncles in the other room playing cards and I was so sure that Santa was on his way to my house in particular. All of that is lost and Christmas will never ever be the same as when my own daughters were little and we had the holiness of doing Advent devotions together and I, I, the joy of hearing them play carols on the piano and the excitement of them tearing their presents open. All of that is lost. And the truth is someday, someday there'll be a Christmas without me, won't there? You know, I sort of miss that already. And I'm aware that many of you have endured losses far greater, much deeper than my own. And so maybe what we need is a Christmas story that meets us where we are. <laughs> maybe what we need is a Christmas story that doesn't gloss over the suffering and the death, even at Christmas. Because every journey, even at Christmas, comes at a cost. Our theme this whole season has been home for Christmas, which kind of begs the question, though, doesn't it? What is home? What is home? As I think about home, what comes first to my mind is a particular house in a little town called Bushton, Kansas. Mm -hmm. It's a house that my parents bought and moved into when they were first married, and they lived there together for over 50 years, the same house. My mother continued to live there until she died several years later. And of course, it was my home for the first 18 years of my life. And I continued to visit my parents there often for more than 25 years after that. I can still, I can still smell the smell <laughs> of every room in that house. I bet I could still bound up the stairs two at a time in the pitch dark and miss every creaky spot along the way. I am familiar with that house. But after mother died, we had to sell that house. Truth is, I don't even know who lives there anymore. And several years ago, I, I visited my hometown and I drove and I parked across the street from that house and just kind of spent some quiet time reflecting and, and praying. And it occurred to me that as powerful as my connection to that house is, it's not home anymore. And it also occurred to me that, that when I allow it to be, everywhere I've ever lived has been home, <laughs> even if I haven't thought of it that way at the time, from the tiny, tiny dorm room in Champaign, Illinois, to the cockroach-infested apartment Carolyn and I shared in Atlanta right after we were born, to the lovely parsonage that you provide on Slade Avenue, you know, everywhere we've been. Well, we've had friends and loved ones to invite in. Everywhere we've been, we've just tried to live according to God's law. Everywhere we've been, we have known that Jesus, Emmanuel, God, is with us. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, the journey is home. There are different ways of thinking about that truth about life. The theologian Nell Morton has said that home is not a place, that home is a movement. Home is a quality of relationships. Home is a state of being able to be authentic with people. The singer Harry Chapin, famous for Cats in the Cradle song, he has a song called Greyhound, and in it he sings, it's got to be the going, not the getting there that's good. In other words, the journey is home. And in the little video promo I did the other day, I summed it up this way. I said, home is not just a place. It's also a place in the heart. <laughs> home is not just somewhere to journey to. Home is a way of journey. Which brings us back around to the story we started Advent with, the story by Frederick Beekner in his lovely little book called The Longing for Home. And he says it was towards the middle of December that the great preacher George Buttrick said something in a sermon that has always stayed with me. He said that on the previous Sunday, 
as he was getting ready to leave the church to go home, he happened to overhear somebody out on the church step say to somebody else, are you going home for Christmas? Can almost see Buttrick, his glasses glittering in the lectern light as he glared out at all those people in the large dim sanctuary. And he said it again. Are you going home for Christmas? And said it in some sort of way that brought tears to my eyes and almost made it unnecessary for him to go on and give his answer to the question, which is that home finally is the manger in Bethlehem, <laughs> that place where at midnight even oxen kneel. Home, the preacher said, is where Christ is. Anne Lamott tells about a little seven-year-old girl that got lost one day and she was frantically running up and down streets trying to find some landmark, some familiar place and she just couldn't see anything that she recognized and she got more and more scared and finally a friendly police officer stopped to help her and he put her on the passenger seat of his cruiser and he drove all around and finally she exclaimed, there's my church, I see my church. And he, she said, you can let me off here. Well, of course, he wanted to take her all the way home. He wanted to make sure that she connected with family. But she said, nope, nope, let me off here. This is my church. I can always find my way home from here. Uh -huh. Isn't that a lovely story? You see, this is my church. You are my church. This is where I pray and sing God's praise, and open up God's word. For me, this is the manger in Bethlehem, where at midnight even oxen kneel. And I can always, always find my way home from here. So that concludes our Advent ponderings. I hope you've enjoyed this series about home for Christmas. So on your way out today, maybe I should say on your way home today, I've got a little gift for you. The ushers will have them at the doors. I'll put one in your hand. It's not a big thing. It's just a, a little metal coin, a, a pewter token. On one side it has the Holy Family. On the other side it has a Bible verse from Luke's Gospel. And I hope that you'll, you'll slip it in your pocket or put it in your purse Maybe put it on your dashboard or on the nightstand beside your bed uh, that you'll keep it close at hand because here's why I'm giving it to you. Here is my Advent prayer, my Christmas prayer for you this year. That with Jesus in your pocket, <laughs> with Christ always close, wherever you go, may your journey always be home.